birds in flight, thousands of geese on the move. Each year, in spring and in fall, the age-old cycle of movement begins, the migration of the birds. If you live in central United States or Canada, you may witness a spectacular event of migration, such as this gathering of blue geese and snow geese. From their winter home in the marshes of Louisiana, these geese will travel several thousand miles to their summer nesting grounds around Hudson Bay, Canada. More familiar, perhaps, are the handsome Canada geese, long-distance migrants that also fly twice a year between southern United States and Canada. A migrant may be defined as any bird that makes regular trips between two regions. Migrants, like these coots, spend the summer in their breeding range in the northern parts of North America and spend the winter in their feeding range along the warm Gulf Coast of the United States or Mexico. Migrants nest and raise their young in their northern home. When these young ducks are grown, they will make the flight with their parents to the winter feeding range in Mexico or Central America. Some migrants go farther, to South America. These snipe are among the birds that spend their winter on the broad grassy plains, the pampas of Argentina. Twice a year they make the 3,000 mile flight from Central North America to South America. The bobolink is another long distance flyer that migrates between North and South America. But all birds do not migrate. Those that remain in one region throughout the year, like the red-headed woodpecker, are called permanent residents. The chickadee is another year-round resident, as is the blue jay. Permanent residents are birds that are able to find food throughout the year in one locality. The morning dove, which is a seed eater, or birds of prey like owls, which feed on small animals, are able to find food through the winter. The availability of food helps determine whether birds travel and how far. Gulls, seeking food in the winter, migrate when the water freezes, moving until they find open water again. They are among the birds called irregular or intermittent migrants. Several species of herons, which also find their food in the water, are irregular migrants. But most of the migrating birds of North America, like the common red-winged blackbird, are regular migrants, birds that move southward in the fall and northward in the spring. Even among the regular migrants, there are wide variations in the route they follow and the distance they fly. The red-winged blackbirds are short-distance migrants. For these birds, the summer breeding range extends to this line. In the fall, flocks of red-wings migrate to warmer regions along the Gulf of Mexico. This relatively short movement is common among other birds, including the purple grackle, a species of blackbird. The kingfisher and the handsomely marked wood duck. These are among the short distance migrants. Many kinds of ducks and geese make much longer regular journeys. It is the ducks and geese that provide the spectacular sights of migration in spring and fall. These long distance migrants follow four great routes or flyways across North America. The Pacific Flyway originates largely in Alaska and is followed by some of the sea ducks. Among them is the scop, a deep sea duck. Some pintails from Alaska also use the Pacific Flyway. 
A second western route is the Central Flyway. It extends across the Great Plains southward to Latin America. Waterfowl using this flyway include shoveler ducks, relatives of the mallards, and the American widgeon, also called the bald pate. Most heavily traveled of the flyways is the Mississippi Flyway, following the Mackenzie Valley of Canada through the Mississippi Valley and continuing on down into South America. This route is followed by vast numbers of waterfowl, blue geese, snow geese, mallard ducks, most common of all the migratory ducks, blue-winged teal, and many others. Along the eastern coast is a fourth great route, the Atlantic Flyway. One main branch follows the Great Lakes, the other the sea coast. Among the birds using this route are Canada geese, the canvasback, one of the largest of American ducks, and the similar looking but smaller redhead duck. Among the four great flyways, there is, of course, overlapping and many variations in the actual flight paths. But in a generalized way, these represent the main routes, not only of waterfowl, but of many species of other birds, ranging from the robin, probably the best known of North American migrants, to less common types, such as the whooping crane. Champion migrant of all, is the Arctic tern. It breeds in the Arctic and winters in the Antarctic, making a yearly round trip of about 25,000 miles. Swiftest flyer among the migratory ducks is the little blue-winged teal. The male is handsomely marked on the head with a blue patch on the wing for which the duck is named. The female blue-winged teal is drab colored but has the same identifying blue patch on the wing. In following the story of a pair of teal, we can follow a complete migration through the year. The time is early summer, and the place is a marsh in Manitoba. It is one of many waterways in Canada which are the breeding grounds of the blue-winged teal. Soon after arriving in the spring, the female builds a nest of reeds and grass close to the water in which she lays her eggs. After about four weeks, the young teal hatch. Within a few hours after hatching, the ducklings are dry and fluffy and able to take to the water. Now the warm summer weeks will be spent in swimming, feeding, and growing up. The baby teal begin more and more to resemble their parents as feathers develop. By late summer, the young are fully grown, ready to join the parents in the long journey southward. What impels them to leave their northern breeding range in the fall? The answer is not fully known. Among the many theories of bird migration, one holds that the diminishing food supply is a major factor. Another theory proposes that the diminishing amount of daylight is a stimulating factor that is a major cause of migration. Whatever the reason, and there are a number of theories, the teal begin to move as the days grow shorter. In September, they are moving from Manitoba and crossing Minnesota. The lakes and marshes of Minnesota are left behind as the teal move southward along the Mississippi Flyway. Crossing Iowa, the birds fly along the Mississippi River, which is one of the major landmarks which the teal and many other migrating birds follow. Birds that include pintail ducks and mallards. For all migrating birds, the distance traveled in a single flight depends largely on the food supply. The teal can fly more than 100 miles a day but they stop to feed and rest along the way. 
so the southward journey may take two to three months. By October, the teal are moving past Illinois and Missouri into Arkansas. But there are more than miles to conquer. Storms may blow the birds off course. Man-made structures, lighthouses, and other high buildings are obstacles into which the birds may crash. Hawks and other birds of prey may seize the migrants. And hunters may legally take teal during the proper season. Yet, refuge can be found in the wildlife preserves maintained by federal and state governments and in the thousands of acres of lakes and marshland along the Mississippi Flyway. Here in a marsh in Arkansas, more than a thousand miles from their northern home, the blue-winged teal are feeding and resting. The next leg of their journey will take them from Arkansas down to the Gulf of Mexico into the coastal marshes of Louisiana and Texas. Here the teal will be mingling with other migrants such as the snowy egrets and other herons that winter in this warm region. Along with the herons and other irregular migrants are the tropical birds that are permanent residents of the warm Gulf Coast. These include black-headed storks and roseate spoonbills. These wading birds feed in the marshes along the coast where the teal are making a temporary stop before completing their migration. Some of the blue-winged teal, along with many other migrants, cross the open water of the Gulf of Mexico to the Yucatan Peninsula. Other teal follow a safer route along the coast into Mexico. Here in the warm tropical waters of Mexican lakes and coastal marshes, the teal have reached their winter home. The long journey is over, and yet the dangers are not. Here too, some of the teal are taken by hunters. In November, the teal may move from the coastal regions of Mexico, inland, to the highland lakes. Here by the thousands, they will remain through the winter until it is time to begin the return journey. We have followed their flight from the north, which takes about three months. They traveled from their breeding range in Canada to the coastal marshes and highland lakes of southern Mexico. Determining the 3,000 mile route the teal follow, their rate of speed and other migration data may be done by the banding method. Since 1920, the Fish and Wildlife Service of the United States, in cooperation with the Canadian Wildlife Service, has carried out the banding of thousands of migratory waterfowl. Birds, like these mallard ducks, are trapped and banded. Each band carries a serial number and the legend, Right to Fish and Wildlife Service, Washington, D.C. The bird, of course, is released unharmed, and whenever a banded bird is reported, it is another bit of evidence in piecing together the complex story of migration. In spring, as in fall, the heaviest migration begins. Many birds can be observed moving northward again. The robin is among the earliest arrivals, sometimes reaching its northern nesting range while snow is still on the ground. A very dramatic return is made annually by the swallows of the mission of San Juan Capistrano, California. These birds almost invariably return on March 19th from South America. About the time the snow and ice begin to melt, ducks and other waterfowl move northward to their summer breeding grounds. Northward back across Minnesota and into Canada, the migrants are on their way. 
Mallards and other ducks search for open water. Some of the lakes are still partly frozen when the birds arrive. The blue-winged teal are moving to their nesting sites. And here, a pair of teal have returned to the same place they left, ready now to mate, and so complete the cycle of migration. There is still much to be learned, not only about the migration of the teal, but about the annual trips that most birds make between their nesting grounds and their winter homes. The marvelous journeys of the birds that migrate.